We're about to send the colorful metaphors out of some Star Trek, but believe it or not, we at CinemaSins actually love Star Trek. So much so that we made a new CinemaSins podcast called Captain's Pod. A show where the CinemaSins crew can review, sin, and talk about everything Star Trek. So whether you're new to Star Trek, a lifelong Trekkie, or anything in between, join us on the USS Enterprise by searching for Captain's Pod or CinemaSins in your podcast player of choice. Until then, enjoy the video and live, live long, long and prosper. prosper. The first contact theme f***ing rules, but nothing short of the Beastie Boys would have prevented the two minutes and 50 seconds of soft focusing credits from sabotaging the start of this movie. <laughs> Dream fake outs. Several centuries ahead of us, virtually no improvements on sinks slash faucets. Awesome. Good to know we already have it as good as it gets in that regard. <laughs> Double dream fake outs. Authorization to the card 47 Alpha Tango. We're in the 24th century here, and this guy is captain of a flagship vessel, and his authorization password is four characters long? 47 Alpha Tango? This might be the biggest sin in the movie. I'm not joking. Four characters? The Reliance prefix code in the Rathacon was longer than that. I've just received a disturbing report from Deep Space 5. Don't! Only four deep spaces away from referencing another beloved Trek show. Missed opportunity. Captain's log. Narration. The moment I have dreaded for nearly six years has finally arrived. But why has it taken six years for the Borg to return? The last cube they sent made it all the way to Earth and was then put to sleep. Isn't that worthy of some pretty swift follow-up? The Borg, our most lethal enemy. Believing the Borg are more lethal than the guy who clicks his fingers and makes entire galaxies disappear out of sheer boredom. Captain. There has been no unusual activity along the Romulan border for the last nine months. It seems highly unlikely they would choose this moment to start a conflict. Is it though? Taking advantage of an enemy while they're preoccupied fighting off an invasion sounds like the most Romulan f***ing thing I've ever heard of. I mean, or the most Romulan f***ing thing my nerd ass friends have heard of. Yeah, f***ing nerds. Bizet? Berlioz. What do you have? No f***ing manners is what he apparently has. Picard is attempting to drown out the sound of the Borg with some classical music and Riker just lets himself in as if he's the captain now. And Starfleet has every confidence in the Enterprise and her crew, they're just not sure about her captain. Then change the damn captain, right? Jordy just said, The Enterprise E is the most advanced starship in the fleet. And you're going to sideline it and the most experienced crew out there because the captain has PTSD? Move him to Starfleet headquarters. Send him on vacation, but don't leave your prize stallion on the bench. Or some other metaphor that makes more sense. They believe that a man who was once captured and assimilated by the Borg should not be put in a situation where he would face them again. Sounds like pretty solid reasoning, if you ask me. Mr. Data, put Starfleet frequency 1486 on audio. They don't use any more digits in their ship security than they use for their audio frequencies. Oh. Oh. How does it make any sense to have one open channel for all the Federation ships to communicate with? This should be white noise due to so many captains broadcasting at the same time, but they're somehow getting a carefully edited selection of audio that updates them with exactly what they need to know like it's a football match. I'm about to commit a direct violation of our orders. Any of you who wish to object should do so now. It will be noted in my log. But only those of you currently on the bridge. Everyone else is f***ed. And I'll save them a seat at the court-martial. Bridge to transporter room three. Beam the defiant survivors aboard. Transporter rooms one and two. Stand by and do nothing. Also, no one seems to think it's an issue that transporting requires dropping shields. And that's probably not something you want to do while in phasering distance of a board cube. This is Captain Picard of the Enterprise. I'm taking command of the fleet. But the entire fleet is using this channel right now, mostly to scream and say, Ah, and sh**. How can anyone hear you? Also, in modern times, this move would be met with 50 other starship captains instantly challenging Picard for fleet command, resulting in a vote which requires a quorum, and now everyone is dead. The coordinates you have indicated do not appear to be a vital system. Trust me, Data. Jean-Luc, does it really take that much effort to say, I'm still connected to the Borg, so I know these coordinates will fully f*** their sh up? You know, just in case anyone else out there decides to disregard seemingly outrageous orders like a certain other Starfleet captain we know? The fleet's responded, sir. They're standing by. Thanks, Will, but we're going to hold for just a few more seconds because... Uh, f the ship and her crew. Back at the academy, their captain stole the role of Macbeth from me, and that shall not stand. The line must be drawn here.
Whoever didn't give the ship the memo that they shouldn't be flying towards the exploding board cube. I have a patient here who insists on coming to the bridge. She said contrived excuse to bring the crew back together strangely. Also, let's just pretend we don't remember all those people who died under his command mere moments ago. So if we could use some help at tactical. Way to make this guy feel like a piece of sh**, John Luke. You do remember how to fire phasers. Riker survives this. They must have done it in the past. They went back and assimilated Earth. Changed history. Okay, but if that's the case, why did it take them so long? Why not do this ages ago? There's no indication the Borg only just now developed time travel capabilities. And why wouldn't they go back in time first, and then approach Earth for assimilation, and not even have to worry about Starfleet ships? The temporal wake must have somehow protected us from the changes in the timeline. He said, plot conveniently. I must follow them back. Repair whatever damage they've done. Yeah, but if Earth has already been assimilated, doesn't that mean that you did follow them back and failed? Why would they be seeing a future where the Borg win if they go back in time to save the day? Shouldn't they see a regular-ass Earth? And shouldn't that have led them to think they don't have to go back in time, which means that the Borg would win, and then they would be seeing an Earth that's- Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. The Borg decide to fire on people randomly instead of assimilating them or targeting the Phoenix directly. You know, the thing that probably would have resulted in them winning. Most of the major cities have been destroyed, very few governments left. 600 million dead, no resistance. Riker lists all the ways this should be a piece of cake for the Borg, thus making it all the more ridiculous that they managed to f it up. Turns out resistance is very much not futile when you've got the writers on your side. April 4th, the day before first contact. Roll credits. Have a security team meet us in transporter room three. Dang, did the staff of transporter rooms one and two just f***ing hate themselves as the captain again and again chooses room three? Is he punishing them for something? Computer. Mid-21st century civilian clothing. You heard it, everyone. Just 40 short years until we get to dress like this. Hold your fire! Neither Data nor Picard thought to scan for life forms of the Borg variety or otherwise. Data is literally a walking tricorder. Captain, I believe I can handle this. By immediately exposing this primitive human to the wonders of my android body and forever corrupting the timeline. I have to get her to sickbay. Doctor. Please, no lectures about the Prime Directive. <laughs> Caring about the Prime Directive as if that ship hasn't already sailed, picked up some whales and a random marine biologist and returned back to the future. So, boyhood fantasy data. Living out your boyhood fantasies in front of your colleague. I must have seen this ship hundreds of times in the Smithsonian, but I was never able to touch it. You went to the Smithsonian hundreds of times? What do you think? I think you're a random extra that suddenly has dialogue, which means that you're almost certainly doomed to die horribly before I can finish saying quantum slipstream <laughs> Paul? Are you okay in there? Her colleague, Paul, disappeared quickly after climbing up here, so instead of calling it in, she climbs up exactly the same way he did. Mr. Data and I are returning to the ship. Understood. Number one, take charge down here. But for reasons purely to do with suspense, I won't tell you the crucial information that I'm returning because the Borg are slowly assimilating the ship. Somehow they're transported over here without being detected. My friends, the weight of the convenience that is being held upon the shoulders of that somehow cannot be overstated. Take it easy, stay calm, you are all right. You're on a spaceship from the future that's being invaded by robot zombies and I'm gonna need to shove you in an access vent to escape. Other than that, you're fine. Which way? Isn't this something she should already know? Like knowing your emergency escape routes in case of a flood, fire, or sudden assimilation? A person from Earth before the age of interstellar travel will now choose to ignore the people leading the way and make her own path on the spaceship she doesn't believe is real, wholly against type choices, Batman. Why is this armory so big? Bigger than engineering or sick pet? Nothing says, now I mean business, quite like losing your sleeves. Like all cybernetic life forms, they cannot survive without their organic components. He says, standing next to the cybernetic life form with no organic components. You may encounter Enterprise crew members who've already been assimilated. Don't hesitate to fire. Believe me, you'll be doing them a favor. Yeah, like that time your crew killed your Borg ass instead of finding a way to rescue you because there's literally no way to reverse the Borgifying process, hmm? In light of the possible end of the world, these guys are still selling their moonshine, and I don't blame them. In fact, I'm sending this movie for now having more people buying and guzzling this moonshine. And then it took three shots of something called tequila. Expecting me to believe that tequila didn't survive to the 24th century. I refuse to acknowledge a future where we aren't tricking our friends into drinking liquid death. The Borg are gonna have the way tonight. Captain, I believe I am feeling anxiety. Data's emotion ship causes problems, cliche. Lower your weapons. They'll ignore us till they consider us a threat. How are you not seen as an immediate threat? The Borg are in the middle of remodeling the house they're squatting in and suddenly the owners show up. They should feel pretty threatened. The asshole back here who decides to play statues instead of helping out Mr. Worf with his Borg problem. Captain! Data! Holy sh**. Data has no defense mechanisms in his brain. He's more easily kidnapped here than a gingerbread cookie would be. Jesus, jumping 
Also, Data is strong enough to just stick out his fingers and hold hard to whatever surface they're touching, but instead he slides out quick and quiet like my college roommate doing the pull-out method on my girlfriend. Please. Help. Murder. A group of cybernetic creatures from the future have traveled back through time to enslave the human race. He's absolutely right to be incredulous, which makes me wonder why they didn't start by showing off some of their future technology instead of just using words. Your theories on warp drive allow fleets of starships to be built. Maybe he's the man into it a bit. I realize tomorrow morning is the deadline, but the mind can only process so much information at a time. And you people, you're all astronauts on some kind of Star Trek. Roll an entire franchise's worth of credits. Roll them all. She can't take anymore. It's a freaking miracle that she doesn't shoot him on accident, given how many buttons are on this thing and how shaky she is right now. You want a way out? Here it is. Jesus, Jean-Luc, for Christ, do you want to give the poor woman a heart attack? Sick Bay isn't exactly accepting new patients right now. I am the beginning, the end, the one who is many. Pretty sure Jesus is supposed to have said similar sh Are you their leader? I bring order to chaos. These kinds of conversations are maddening. It's like asking someone if they prefer Coke or Pepsi and they say yes. Borg do not evolve. They conquer. That's just plain not true. They assimilate new cultures, which, yes, they conquer, which in turn evolves the Borg. That is the entire point of their whole de Did they not watch The Next Generation? That is because you haven't been properly stimulated yet. Why is Boner? Unless the Borg have figured out a way to create human skin, I think it's very likely that Data is currently wearing the skin of one of his former crewmates, and this will never be addressed, questioned, or judged. How big is this ship? There are 24 decks. You might want to talk to Lieutenant Daniels about that, because mere minutes ago, he said... It looks like the control deck's 26 up to 11. So where did those two extra decks come from? Or are they party decks that the captain isn't supposed to know about? I still can't fathom why Picard, captain of the Enterprise, former Borg drone, and the galaxy's last hope for salvation hasn't earned the default status of someone we should immediately count as a threat by all Borg. Why aren't any of these holograms reacting to the Borg launching their fellow patrons around? Even if they're programmed to not acknowledge weird sh aren't they programmed to react? to the sh around them in a realistic way? Doesn't feel very immersive to have this chaos going on around them and they just continue to sip their martinis and listen to jazz. <laughs> Did Picard really load up all this just to get to a machine gun from the 1940s? You have a holodeck with Q knows how many programs and this is the best you could think of? Not a military base with soldiers and grenades and rocket launchers and sh Jesus, loading up the holodeck version of Home Alone would have made more sense than this. Holodeck bullets become real if you believe it hard enough, kids. And yes, the safety protocols are off, but that still doesn't explain how, and more importantly, why holographic bullets become real bullets. God fucking sh damn it. I can't say I blame them. We all grew up hearing about what you did here. So get used to it instantly, old drunk who couldn't possibly have fathomed his rocket's impact on the future. Jesus, these Starfleet people, adoring as they are of Cochrane, are absolutely dicks about information overloading this guy. You know, I probably shouldn't even tell you this, but... I went to Zephram Cochran High School. Why should you not tell him this? You already told him he invented warp travel and saved the human species and started a utopian society. Why would knowing that somewhere in there they named a high school after him scare him more than all that other sh**? I am a Klingon. Imagine thinking that saying this will make her any less frightened. I've accessed a Borg neuroprocessor and I've discovered what they're trying to do. Did Picard take that Borg processor thing and plug it into a Starfleet tricorder? And it just worked? Do you remember your zero-G combat training? You were talking to a f***ing Klingon! He remembers all his battle training. The forge and enhance cliche. Magnetize. You are so used to Star Trek captains saying energize, you are taken aback when one says magnetize. But more importantly, why weren't these suits boots already magnetized? Are you using a polymer-based neural relay to transmit the organic nerve impulses to the central process? No! Human. We used to be exactly like them. Flawed. Weak. Organic. Wait, are the Borg not hugely organic? Well, if we set our phasers to full power, we- No, can... there's a risk that we'd hit the dish. It's charged with antiprotons. We could destroy half the ship. I know this is for the benefit of the audience, but I think Lieutenant Hawk needed to pay more attention in his how to make sure you don't accidentally blow up your ship 101 class before being assigned to the flagship. He could have hit his face on a rock and died. This is hella dangerous, especially since that guy is old and he can't run away from you forever. 
Setting off the interfluxing capacity beacon is a pretty big part of the Borg's master plan, and somehow the presence of Picard, Worf, and the Red Shirt still isn't deemed a threat to be dealt with immediately. They'll just meander over just in time to do f all about it. I don't care what century it is, there's no way those chunky ass gloves are going to allow for the dexterity needed to push those tiny buttons. I will accept time travel, but not that. But what about the anti protons, Jean Luc? Going on a spacewalk into space while wearing a spacesuit to protect you from space? That's the perfect time to shove your very sharp alien blade weapon up under your space vest. Just perfect, I tell ya. Why do the Borg shields work against phaser fire but not blades? Shouldn't the blade bounce right off? And if not, why aren't we just launching daggers at them? This is so dangerous. He could easily just float off into space forever by doing this, and he nearly does. Why didn't he shove a very sharp alien blade weapon up under his space vest? Could he use that to fight like Worf did instead of nearly kick jumping yourself into space? <laughs> what? He got tackled into space by a Borg like 90 seconds ago. How the f is he a Borg already? Assimilation cannot take place that quickly. And did they take his helmet off, Borg him up, put the helmet back on, and send him after his former captain? Because that's not how space works. This is one of the most baffling things I've ever seen in my entire life. Assimilate this. Sigh, stealing from the Matrix. I built this ship so that I could retire to some tropical island filled with naked women. Isn't this kind of a post-apocalyptic time, though? Are the naked tropical island people, like... Are we for sure they survived the World War III sh Captain, our weapons are useless. We must activate the auto-destruct sequence and use the escape pods to evacuate the ship. No! Jean-Luc, if we destroy the ship, we destroy the Borg. We're gonna stay and fight. Being confidently wrong. And I realize that part of Picard's arc in this movie is letting go of some of his Borg-related anger from the Locutus stuff, but he is way too smart and calculated as a man, evidenced over many seasons to let his raw emotions run this rampant. I don't care that it leads to an amazing scene with an iconic line here in a minute. Picard cannot be this impulsive and emotional. The line should have been drawn a ways back when he was not this impulsive and emotional. Jean-Luc. Oh yeah, Beverly is in this movie. I believe you are allowing your personal experience with the board to influence your judgment. You want to destroy the ship and run away, you coward. Listen, I know that Picard is dealing with some deep trauma, but he's never been one to outright ignore his crew, let alone treat them like this. Jesus, this line to Worf is just f***ing mean. If we can get off this ship and then blow it up, let's do it! Once the captain's made up his mind, the discussion is over. Seriously, why is Beverly even here? I love Alfre Woodard, but talking Picard down should absolutely be Beverly's role here. Instead of relegating her to, yes sir, right away sir, the writers could have easily leveraged Beverly's decades of friendship with Picard and have her go in there and tell him to stop being such a mopey dick. Captain Ahab has to go hunt his whale. The only connection here to Ahab is the obsessed revenge angle, but it's not like Picard has spent the last six years of his life full bore hunting down Borg in the hopes of destroying them. Those f***ers came to Earth and started sh He hates them and he wants revenge, but I'm not sure we should be drawing a straight line between garden variety revenge story and Captain Ahab. You broke your little ships. He did not. You see, in this shot, all the ships are still on the wall, but somehow in the very next shot, the saucer section of Enterprise C and the drive section of the Enterprise D have been magically and noiselessly subjected to a forced separation. Yes, I'm here to make you question everything you hold dear. Apologies. Bobby Dick. Actually, I never read it. God damn it. Why are Jordy and Riker going with Cochran on this flight? He did it himself originally, yeah? Don't they risk changing history by doing this? Captain Data. Dun, dun. Um, but is Data able to speak into the captain's consciousness directly somehow? Because no one who recently left the bridge has escaped by pod yet, and they would all hear this as well if it was going through the ship's speakers. But the Borg and Data have no supernatural audio abilities, so how the what the f Picard is gonna have his way tonight? How could you forget me so quickly? Come on now, Queenie, you can't blame the man for forgetting something the writers hadn't thought of yet. Let Data go. And I will take my place at your side. What in the ever-loving Hall of Fame of bad takes did you just say? Data, deactivate the self-destruct sequence. Starfleet should really think about reviewing the privacy settings on their Android devices. You know, you just can't be too careful with your personal data. They should be out there right now. We've got to break the warp barrier in the next five minutes if we're going to get their attention. So the Vulcans are going to be able to pick up the warp signature of the Phoenix, but none of the 24th century emissions that are coming from the Borger Prize? I am bringing the external sensors online. Trader data is so obviously faking, it's super obvious. Dana! Resistance is futile. Yes! 
but wait, at uh, what point did Data break free of the Borg Queen's mind control? Oh, f*** it, I don't truly care. But also, Data Ex Machina. Hey, that one actually is a Deus Ex Machina. Also, also, Data, you dick. This fake out is some incredible movie tension, but it doesn't make a damn bit of sense in the real world. If he hasn't been turned, what's with all the buildup? Who benefits from pretending to fire torpedoes at the Phoenix? He doesn't even take advantage of the distraction. He waits until it's obvious he's betrayed her and then acts. Does the queen not have the assimilatory tubey thingies? You'd think she'd have more in her armory than a bit of thigh grabbing. Data did something and the queen died. I think. Maybe. If I know. Add one sin anyway. Conveniently for all involved, all the drones die as soon as the queen does. She brought me closer to humanity than I ever thought possible. I mean, if you define humanity as a bit of forearm skin and a third of a face, then yeah. But that seems like a pretty narrow definition to me. Captain's log, April the 5th. 2063. I saved the world along with my co-workers. Sadly, this world would be destroyed by climate change inside the next 10 years, but whatevs. This here particular story is ending on a happy note. Hey, Marv! Shut up, Harry. This is one of the most important moments in the history of the world, so don't you go spoiling it with one of your witty observations. I'm not trying to spoil anything. Good. I just think it's weird that they look exactly the same as us, but they just have slightly pointier ears. That's all. Like, isn't that weird? Damn it, Harry! beaming literally in sight of the Vulcan ship. I'm sure that won't be a problem at all. Captain, I've reconfigured our warp field to match the chronometric readings of the Borg sphere. That's a weird way of saying we only got two minutes left to wrap this shit up, and since we don't have a Vulcan on board to do any time warp calculations, I decided to reverse engineer Borg time travel using a few sensor readings and magic pixie dust. No biggie. We're the same, you and me. Actually... No, we're not. <laughs> yeah, we are. No, we're not. There are fields now. Endless fields. Where human beings are no longer born. We are grown. Captain Slock, 6, 7, 8, 9, point 10. We are en route to the Galactic Federation Conference on Silos 5. I'm confused. All I hear from you, you spineless cowards, is how poor you are. Captain. I believe I speak for everyone here, sir, when I say... I do the cha-cha like a sissy girl. I work for the FBI. Me too. Captain's log, Stardate 14. We are being pulled towards a hostile planet. I'm hoping that Scotty will be able to activate the backup control system. I love a good peep show. That's a trick. <laughs> How'd you do that? Jean-Luc Picard. My name. You're goddamn right. Borg. Sounds Swedish. I'm making a pretty good. Gina! Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs>